Just shy of the 100th anniversary commemorating the end of the Civil War, conflicts over civil rights were being contested in Congress. Compromise seemed out of reach since legislation was being blocked by Southern Senators and Northern Conservatives utilizing their most tactical legal move, the filibuster. The ever-powerful filibuster allowed senators to hold the floor for a lengthy time to prevent a vote on a specific bill. A two-thirds majority vote was needed for closure, which required a bipartisan effort. The Senate had a love-hate relationship with the filibuster. At times, the filibuster protected their interest against the majority, while in other cases, it created nuisance when bills were stalled. Following World War II, attitudes towards segregation and voting rights underwent a transformation. A younger, more aggressive generation, which included veterans, was unwilling to be silenced any longer. Their images were captured and viewed on television screens in millions of homes throughout America, helping to promote the cause of equality while also creating fear and anger in conservative circles. Democratic majority leader from Texas, Senator Lyndon Johnson, was an exception to the Southern stereotype. Johnson had previously led the passage of two civil rights bills in 1957 and 1960. However, the compromises that he was forced to accept to avoid a filibuster left both acts largely ineffective. He felt that his fellow Southern Democrats were clearly out of step with the changing culture. The Kennedy-Johnson presidential campaign in 1960 left activists disappointed. Once in the office, President Kennedy faced increased pressure to provide leadership following violence in the South, particularly in Birmingham, Alabama. President Kennedy proposed a comprehensive civil rights bill to Congress, but this process came to a dramatic end with his assassination on November 22, 1963. Civil rights once again became a challenge for Lyndon Johnson. President Johnson had the misfortune of leading a Democratic Party with a split personality, liberals in the North and conservatives in the South. In the House of Representatives, there was enough progressives to push the civil rights bill through, but the Senate posed a problem. Since Northern Democrats could not produce enough votes to stop a filibuster in the Senate, uh, yet he, the second thing he told me was, he said, now you know that that bill can't pass unless you get Ab Dirksen. And he said, you and I are going to get Ab. It's going to take time. We're going to get it. But he said, you make up your mind now that you've got to spend time with Ab Dirksen. You've got to play to Ab Dirksen. You've got to let him have a piece of the action. He's got to look good all the time. Meanwhile, Dirksen was suggesting amendments to the bill, but his strategy was unclear. Was he devising a political deal to have Republicans join Southern Democrats? In the end, it seemed that Dirksen was simply test marketing alterations to the bill, looking for ways to reach a compromise. Senator Everett Dirksen, a longtime Republican lawmaker from Illinois, had captured the attention of the White House. President Johnson needed someone with negotiating skills and willingness to work with the opposing party. Johnson may also have felt that he could manipulate Dirksen, therefore accomplishing his political agenda. But many others felt that Dirksen was a questionable choice to lead the charge for civil rights. African American leaders considered him a slacker, not a leader. They actually picketed him when debates began on the civil rights bill. Opponents of the civil rights bill also voiced concerns. How would Everett Dirksen, a conservative Republican, convince his fellow senators to join him in creating more federal restrictions since he had often talked against big government? Dirksen tried to calm these concerns by explaining his connection to the civil rights legislation. He stated, My mother stood on Ellis Island as a child of 17, with a tag around her neck directing that she should be sent to peak in Illinois. Our family had opportunities in Illinois, and the essence of what we were trying to do in the Civil Rights Bill is to see that others have opportunities in this country. Senator Dirksen considered himself flexible, always looking for the big picture. All his opponents referred to his voting record 
as indecisive and self-serving. Dirksen was certainly in an awkward position. He was being asked to deliver Republican votes to assist a Democratic president who could not get his own party's full support. By the spring of 1964, Dirksen was poised to deal with a major conflict, a filibuster over civil rights legislation. Dirksen had reservations concerning the bill, specifically those dealing with public accommodations. Well, we had a uh, meeting all day today and uh, with Senator Dirksen on the civil rights bill. Good. And I uh, hear that we have an agreement with him and with well, Senator Aiken and with Senator Gregor. Now, what does he think? Do you think he can get the votes? Vote? Well, he's hopeful. He's going to have to go back and they're going to have a, a meeting of the Republicans on Tuesday morning. To the astonishment of newsmen, Senator Dirksen did not make an announcement, but rather lectured them on the ethical need for civil rights. Taking the moral high ground, he stated that he had been a supporter of the bill all along, which raised some eyebrows. The time had come for action. At 5.38 on the evening of June 9, 1964, Senator Robert C. Byrd of West Virginia stepped forward to begin a 14-hour, 13-minute address, a last-ditch effort to delay the passage of the Civil Rights Act. The essence of the law was to provide legislative protection of voting rights and ban discrimination based on race or ethnicity in public facilities. This law would prevent discrimination in private businesses that offered public services, such as hotels, theaters, and restaurants. The far reaches of this legislation addressed equal opportunities for employment. It also set the stage for educational bills to follow. Working behind the scenes, Senate Whips Hubert Humphrey, a Democrat from Minnesota, Thomas Kuchel, a Republican from California, and the floor managers of the Civil Rights Bill announced that they had secured the 67 votes required to end the filibuster as Senator Byrd concluded his lengthy address at 9.51 a.m. The gallery was filled to capacity on June 10, 1964. 100 senators were present for this climatic moment when the closure vote was cast to end the 75-day filibuster against a civil rights bill. Never in the history of the United States had senators been able to compromise and gather enough votes to end a filibuster relating to civil rights. Late in the morning, Senator Everett Dirksen rose from his seat. Weakened by lengthy days of negotiating and health issues, his words were quiet and deliberate. There are many reasons why closure should be invoked and a good civil rights measure enact. It is said that on the night he died, Victor Hugo wrote in his diary substantially this sentiment. Stronger than all the armies is an idea whose time has come. The time has come for equality of opportunity and sharing of government and education and employment. It must not be stayed or denied. Dirksen's speech reflected the words of Americans who had previously been without a political voice. The motion for a roll call vote for closure was heard. One by one, senators were asked to announce their decision. When the clerk called out, Mr. Engel, there was no response. A brain tumor had robbed California Senator Claire Engel of his ability to speak. Slowly lifting his crippled arm, Senator Engel pointed to his eye, signaling an eye or yes vote. When Delaware's John Williams provided the decisive 67th vote, Majority Leader Mike Mansfield exclaimed, That's it. The final tally stood at 71 to 29, ending the filibuster and resulting in a towering legislative achievement. This Civil Rights Act is a challenge to all of us to go to work in our communities and our states, in our homes and in our hearts, to eliminate the last vestiges of injustice. Dirksen had played a critical role in convincing legislators from both sides of the aisle to compromise in ending the filibuster and guaranteeing equal protection under law for all citizens.